just saw Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker last night and while I absolutely loved it, I thought the visuals were amazing, I thought it was a great wrap up to this incredible trilogy, I still think that The Mandalorian as a whole, even though we like what, seven episodes in and it's just one season, that's just better than many of the Star Wars movies that just exist. I'm sorry. It's that good. Welcome back, Gothamites. If you're new here, hello. I'm London, aka History of the Batman. First off, I am obsessed <laughs> with The Mandalorian, which is a new TV series that is exclusively on Disney Plus, which is Disney's digital streaming service. I have been watching it every week, and of course I am the most obsessed with Baby Yoda because it is the cutest thing in any galaxy. Like, I've seen Ranker articles and BuzzFeed articles saying like, ooh, these are 12 things that are cuter than Baby Yoda. And it's like, wow, why are you just writing these lies on the internet? It makes no sense to me. Baby Yoda is adorable, but that is not what this video is about, unfortunately. <laughs> so after I watched episode, I believe, six of The Mandalorian, it really confirmed for me <laughs> that there are so many similarities between The Mandalorian and Batman. For this video, I will not only be highlighting the similarities between The Mandalorian and The Batman, but also to round out the video, we will discuss who would win in a fight if for some weird reason, Batman and The Mandalorian had to meet and go head to head and how that fight would go because I have thoughts on it. I will talk about it later. But <laughs> before we talk about these titans of the fictional world at the moment, why don't you subscribe to this channel and become part of this wonderful Gothamite community. So if you don't know somehow, which I never assume anything, <laughs> you may not know who the Mandalorian is or what the Mandalorian is or what Baby Yoda is or any of that. You may not! The Mandalorian is a television show exclusively on Disney Plus and it was created by Jon Favreau, aka Disney's God. Like literally, Disney has made a shrine for Jon Favreau, but they're not putting candles and flowers. No, they're putting money bags because this dude is the God of wealth and prosperity for Disney. Like, <laughs> he just can't lose and all of his projects are... Perfect. I'm sorry. Bless John Favreau. <laughs> the Mandalorian is after the fall of the Empire, but before the First Order, and it is said that it's about five years after the film Return of the Jedi, if that helps you at all. In this show, we follow a bounty hunter who is simply called the Mandalorian. Some people call him Mando. I personally like Mando. It's cute. It's sweet. And it just kind of is a juxtaposition to his badass exterior calling him, oh look it's a Mando, that just seems so fun to me. So he's traveling on the outskirts of the galaxy because clearly he's a rebel, shockingly, against the New Republic. One of his conquests to go get that money turned out to be a little green creature that in the show, it's called The Child, but everyone else in the entire world is calling it Baby Yoda, and Disney literally cannot do anything about that. The world has spoken. I have spoken. The name is Baby Yoda. <laughs> so Mando's job not only is now accepting the fact that he is a new dad and has to learn the ways of taking care of a child, but he has to protect his said child from people who are trying to kill Baby Yoda and him and they're just going on all these different adventures across the galaxy together and it is just tons of freaking fun. And considering the budget for this one season was $150 million, the quality of all of it is so amazing. And probably why I said earlier it's better than some of the Star Wars movies that have come out over the years. Now that you know a little bit about The Mandalorian, just in a very, very, very general sense, don't come for me, Star Wars hardcore fans. I am just giving a very 
brief this is what it is. Before we get to the battle part, let's talk about some of the similarities between Bats and Mando. Let's start with the armor. Now, Batman's bat suit is just as important as any other gadget, Batmobile, whatever you can think of. The bat suit is part of what makes Batman who he is. I am not saying that if he is just Bruce Wayne without the cowl and the cape and the suit and he has to fight somebody for some random reason, he can still hold his own without the bat suit. Don't get me wrong. But whatever bat suit and utility belt he wears when he goes out on the Gotham City streets to patrol and beat up bad guys, it does the job that it needs to do. And he has a suit for any situation you could think of. Is he going to space? He got a suit for that. Going up to fight an OP alien in the place where his parents were gunned down? Got a suit for that. And most of the time, Batman's bat suits are made out of Kevlar, so bullets are just not an issue for him. <laughs> Even his cape and cowl can be a functional tool when going out and beating up the bad guys. Depending on the media, his cowl isn't just to cover up his face or to make a really nice brooding fashion statement. His cow is super high tech and can communicate with Alfred and do all kinds of amazing stealth functions. And many times his cape is actually flame retardant, so that helps many times because there's always a bomb going off, someone throwing fire at him, something. And oh, the best part of the cape, sometimes it has pockets. And as a woman, when you find a dress that has pockets, it's like Christmas because it is just so, the functionality of it all is great. All right, now let's talk about the Mandalorian's armor, which bruh. <laughs> the Mandalorian and all really of the Mandalorian bounty hunters within this group, they use the material that is called Beskar, which is found solely on the Mandalorian's planet and literally, it is the equivalent to, say, Captain America's shield. It's made of the vibranium. It's so strong that it's even said that if a lightsaber strikes it, it will be fine. <laughs> Let's just think about that real quick. If a lightsaber can't get through this armor, I kind of want to give a point to Mando's armor over Batman's because that is just impressive all on its own. Oh, and kind of like Batman's cowl, if you want to talk about Mando's helmet, which if you have watched the show, maybe you haven't, they don't take off their helmet. Like literally no one outside of himself and a mirror has seen his face ever since he took up this cause because this is the way. But that helmet, oh no, it's not just to hide that pretty face of his that we haven't seen yet, but I'm sure it's fine because this is Hollywood and guess what? Everyone's pretty. <laughs> there is a built-in display that has scanners, sensors built in, and even different telescoping optics, which sounds just like Batman's cow. If you still are not like, no, no, about the similarities, we're not even through all of it yet. You gotta see, like, the tech and the armor so far, it's very... They, they get each other, you know? <laughs> the next topic that I briefly want to discuss dealing with similarities is their fighting style, which is literally the first thing I noticed about The Mandalorian when I watched, I think, either episode one or episode two. Starting with The Mandalorian for this topic, fighting for The Mandalorians is literally wearing a badge of honor. And it's something that's very special to them to identify with their warrior heritage. The Mandalorian's fighting has an array of melee and other hand-to-hand -hand combat techniques that are just literally killer. Pick any episode of The Mandalorian, doesn't really matter. You can clearly see Mando fighting multiple people at the same time, three, four, five, six, and taking them all out with ease simultaneously. That's whether using hand-to-hand -hand combat or the weapons that he literally has on hand, which are so insane. Get to that in a minute. It is literally looking at a Batman Arkham video game the way that Mando fights whatever enemy he comes across. And he just uses combo moves to fight these people like it's his job. 
which it kind of is, so I get it. But if we go back and look at Batman's fighting style, which of course his fighting techniques are very, very, very extensive. <laughs> we all know that in Batman's origin story, which was originally in 1939's Detective Comics issue 33, written by Bill Finger, of course, that after his parents' death, he vowed to learn all of the sciences and all of the martial arts, which he did. As his mythology progresses, we do learn that before he becomes the Batman, Bruce Wayne travels abroad and studies under different masters and mentors all different types of martial arts and how to have control and a center for his mind, body, and spirit in order to be the ultimate hero that he wants to be for his city in Gotham. It is even said that Batman has mastered over 120 different fighting styles and martial arts. There's a lot. Taekwondo, there's Jiu Jitsu, there's boxing, there's kickboxing, there's Judo, there's Karate, there's everything. Think of a fighting style. Batman probably knows how to do it. <laughs> From looking at this, both Mando and Batman are pretty solid on the fighting scale and their knowledge of hand-to-hand -hand combat. Our last similarities topic that I do want to highlight before we get into the battle section of this is the weaponry, which, what? <laughs> Mando's weapons are next level, just like Batman. Mando's gauntlets, which if gauntlets sounds familiar, Batman has them too, also contains objects like a grappling line, Sounds familiar as well. And blasters. Now, Batman isn't a big fan of guns, so he may not have blasters, but trust me, he has tons of very similar weapons that we've already just briefly said on his person, just like Mando. Oh, but the coolest thing of all, okay, there are two cool things <laughs> that Mando has that are weapons, and I'm like, wow, we are out here doing this right now. Not only does he have a literal flamethrower that Elon Musk is jealous as hell about, like he is somewhere shook. Oh, oh, not just that, but he has a sniper rifle that when he shoots it, he can vaporize his target. It literally just goes into nothing. Who has that? Who does that? Who is like, you know what I need in my arsenal? Something that can completely obliterate anything. <laughs> like, who wants that? A badass, that's who wants that. Mando has tricks and toys just like Batman. And of course, if we do look at Batman's weapons, there's no time. <laughs> there he just has so many. Over the last 80 years, he has added weapons and everything to his arsenal in the back cave on his person everything but if you just want to rattle off some of the weapons that batman uses just on a kind of daily on average it's not really a specific type of problem that's happening he just has it on his person type of weapon <laughs> let's see there's the grappling gun there's the batarang there's gas pellets there's bat bombs. There's just the Batmobile itself that has all types of toys in it. There's a bat suit and utility belt taser just in case anyone who's not Bruce gets their hands on this and they're like, oh no, 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 I'm going to have to shock you and maybe make you unconscious just a little bit. You know what I mean? He has bat sonar. He even has shark repellent bat spray. Okay, that's a very specific thing, but That'll always be one of my favorite bat things ever because how ridiculous. And Adam West! The list can go on and on and on and obviously it is safe to say that Batman, if he has enough prep time or knows the threat, can put together an arsenal that will aid him into defeating whatever enemy that he has to go up against. But is that enough, Bat? Is it enough? that you have prep time? Well, let's see, because we're here, kid. What would happen if Batman and the Mandalorian went head to head? Who would come out on top? Well, let's break this down. <laughs> Watching the Mandalorian series and seeing how Mando moves and weaves and does silent takedowns against enemies, 
it is safe to say that that is such a Batman-esque type of way to be a bounty hunter, vigilante, whatever you want to label him. Which is why this fight, if you think about it, should not be a KO just out like a light. Plus, both of their armors are some of the best in their respected fictional universes. And anyone that goes up against them probably will not succeed in winning that battle. Of course, now that we know all of this, who would win between Batman and the Mandalorian? First off, you have to choose which particular Batman is going up against the Mandalorian that won't get obliterated. Because between his armor, his weaponry, his tech, and his code of this is the way, which love that, Batman will have a very, very, very tough time fighting the Mandalorian. I am not saying that Batman will lose, I'm just saying it won't be an easy fight and it's gonna be work. <laughs> For this reason, some particular Batman come to mind if we do have to go up against the Mandalorian. If you need a really, really solid combat suit better than his regular bat suit that he uses to patrol Gotham and take down petty crooks, then there are several options. Of course, the first that many people would probably think of or can come to mind is of course in Frank Miller's Batman The Dark Knight Returns, particularly in issue four when a very, very retired and kind of broken down Bruce Wayne puts on a very super powered exoskeleton armored suit to fight Superman who of course if he just punched him and he wasn't in anything he would just straight up die. <laughs> so he needs that suit to protect him in order to fight Superman and not die instantly. So a suit that is that strong and that can withstand someone like Superman is definitely a suit that Batman could wear going up against Mando. Other powerful suits that Batman can use to go up against the Mandalorian include the Suit of Sorrows, which was given to Batman by, of course, Talia al Ghul. And the suit is actually from the Crusades, but not only from the Crusades, but it's from the men who died in the Crusades. And apparently that suit is like a Daft Punk song because it makes you better, harder, faster, stronger. But the biggest problem with this suit is that it makes you extremely more violent than you already are. And considering Mando does not care about your life, you might need to be a little bit more violent and angry if you gotta fight Mando. So maybe the suit of sorrows is something that Batman could consider. There is also a Thrasher suit that is used during the arc The Court of Owls, which is Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's series that began in the New 52. And even that nice bat armor suit that Commissioner Gordon used while Bruce Wayne lost his memory after almost dying at the end of Endgame, which is another Scott Snyder um, arc, that could be a great suit as well. Any kind of tech, almost robotic suit that you can think of that Batman, some Batman has worn, can probably be somewhat of a good contender to try to fight against Mando and his armor that is made from some of the strongest materials in the Star Wars galaxy, but we're trying, okay? All of these suits can be great for trying to fight Mando, Honestly, Bruce Wayne's Batman is not the Batman that if we had to choose one should go up against Mando. It can't be. There's no way. And I will tell you who. And that, my friends, is John Paul Valley's Azrael Batman. That is the Batman that if we had to have Batman versus Mando, they need to fight. Now if you have no idea who John Paul Valley is, it's totally chill. John Paul Valley became the new Batman or took up the mantle of Batman that Bruce Wayne gave to him after Bruce's back was broken by the villain Bane in the 1993-1994 saga Batman Nightfall, Night's Quest, and Night's End. And John Paul Valley was like, wow, I get to be the new Batman. That's fantastic. He decided to change every freaking thing and make it as lethal as possible. The bat suit, super lethal. His gauntlets, gauntlets, literally can cut through anything and anybody and like kill it instantly. And he even, <laughs> he even put a bat flamethrower in his new armor. 
The main reason why I think that John Paul Valley's Osreo Batman is the Batman to go up against Mando if we do have to have this fight is because Osreo Batman, at least Nightfall Osreo Batman, has zero problem killing. The Mandalorian in the show has expressed that I, if I don't have to kill, if it's not a necessity for me to kill my enemy, I'll just mess them up and it's fine. But if they threaten, let's say, Baby Yoda, or they even try to threaten anyone that he cares about, even himself, and they know that, oh, they're just a threat to a planet, a village, anything where they need to die, he will kill them. <laughs> and that's where Bruce Wayne's Batman is at fault in trying to find Mando because he will stick to his code. Bruce Wayne will stick to his code of, oh, I don't kill. I, I That's against my moral code. Whereas Mando's like, this is the way, fam. Bam! And that's it. So I have to have a Batman that is okay if he had to. If he had to kill, if we have to do this, if this is what we're doing, that's the one I have to pick. He has the weaponry that is super, super close to Mando. He has the mentality, has the, the little bit of a violent tendency. He has a kind of somewhat coldish demeanor, like I'm about the job. And so if this is the job that I gotta do and it maybe is taking out this guy, this is what I gotta do. That is the Batman I need to fight Mando. So sorry, Bruce. John Paul is the one that's got to step up because you're a little soft when it comes to killing. Sorry. So in conclusion from me screaming at this camera, who would win? Batman or the Mandalorian? I don't know. <laughs> but if I had to choose and I see that it is regular Bruce Wayne's Batman going up against this Mandalorian, I would put the money I don't have on the Mandalorian. I'm so sorry. I still love Batman, but if I have to be realistic about my fiction, which you know I love to do, Mando has that W easily. If Bruce's Batman does have one of those really high-tech suits that we discussed earlier in the video, then he might have a chance to be able to go hand-to-hand -hand with Mando and not just get taken out instantly. But like I said, if we are doing Nightfall, Azrael, Batman against Mando, I would probably try to put my money that I don't have on Azrael. It'll still be a really good fight. It won't just be a 10 seconds, it's over. I honestly think that they would be able to go toe to toe for a really long time. And either one could win, but I probably still put my money on Osriel just because he's crazy. <laughs> Overall, this video was really just for fun because I obviously, and many others do too, see so many similarities between the character of the Mandalorian and the character of Batman. They both, even though they are in their own different universes, have their particular codes of honor, which they respect. And overall, I think Mandalorian and Batman try to do the right thing, even if their methods can be somewhat problematic <laughs> and violent at times. But they are both incredible and currently both iconic fictional characters that we all love, love, love to watch and enjoy. But of course, the most important thing out of all of this is obviously Baby Yoda. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video about who would win, Batman or the Mandalorian or whatever I am calling this video. <laughs> if you did enjoy this video, please give a bat, a bat, a bat, thumbs up. As always, all of my social media is linked in the description below, including Instagram at History of the Batman. So why don't you give it a follow and become a Gothamite? Check out my videos for DC Comics DC Fans channel. And if I do not talk to you guys before Christmas, which means I may not do a video tomorrow, which is Christmas Eve or on Christmas, I honestly hope that you all have such a wonderful, wonderful holiday with your Bat family and super friends. I hope you get all of the Batman gifts that your heart desires. <laughs> oh, and before I go, please subscribe to this channel so you can become a part of this Batman community. It would mean so much for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will have more History of the Batman soon right here on YouTube. 
Remember Goth Nights all about peace, love, and Batman. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. What? <laughs>